In this video, I'm going to show how you can migrate an existing Arduino project from the Arduino IDE so that it runs purely on the command line. Specifically, I'll show you how to build and flash the Arduino directly from a makefile. In addition, I'll show you how you can get the serial output monitor from the Arduino IDE like this directly in a command line environment like this. This way, you can write programs that rely on the Arduino libraries but don't use the IDE at all. So for the context of this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a working Arduino environment and you want to move your Arduino development to be purely on the command line. So you're probably already comfortable uploading the code to the Arduino and you'll probably use things like the serial monitor in the IDE. I'm also going to assume that you're working on a purely Linux environment. I don't know how to use Microsoft Windows, so if you're looking for help with that, I can't help you. And furthermore, you want a build process that works purely on the command line with makefiles just like old school C programmers. In this video, I'll show you a fairly flexible process for how to achieve this. In the end, I will give you the full makefile that I use, but I'll also show you how I came up with that makefile. In the future, the Arduino ID will probably change subtly, so by showing you the full process, you'll be able to tweak it to your needs in the future. Now, to be thorough, I should mention that there already are some existing makefiles in the Arduino system files. You can see some of those here that I listed with the find command. I won't be covering any of these makefiles because they try to be a bit too generic and complex, but you might take some inspiration from them on your own. It's also worth noting that there's a program called Arduino CLI. This is a command line program for interacting with Arduino projects. I've played around with it for a bit, but I haven't found it very useful, so I won't talk about it. The first thing I do is go to the Arduino preferences. In here, there's a couple options to show verbose output for the compilation and upload. Make sure that these are selected. And now if I press Upload, you'll see a whole bunch of output coming out here. And if I scroll up to the top here, you can see a whole bunch of compiler statements that build all of the artifacts for our project. Now it's worth noting that if I press this again, some of these artifacts will already have been built. And if they're already built, then Arduino will not bother building them a second time. So just to make sure we're getting all the compilation statements, make sure to open a fresh version of the Arduino IDE. If it says anything like using previously used version, then you're probably missing some of the statements. So to start the process of migrating to a makefile, we're going to copy all of this output here. Now, a bunch of these statements with avrdude, we don't actually need those because those are just flashing the code to the Arduino. What we're really interested in here are all of these compiler statements and a few linker statements and the flashing statement. So what I'm gonna do here is do control A and control C to copy all that. And now I'm gonna go find the temporary directory that Arduino is using to store all these files. So it looks like it's in uh, temp build 515 and so forth. So if I go to the terminal and type this statement, this is just gonna list all the directories that are in temp. So build 515, that's the one that I'm looking for. So let's just cd to that. Okay, so those are all those artifacts that were mentioned within the Arduino IDE here. So our goal is gonna be to produce all of these files without using the Arduino IDE. So to start this off, I'll just make a file called Arduino build commands.sh because we'll turn this into a script and then eventually we'll turn that script into a makefile. So I'll paste all that output. So here is all of the output that I pasted from the uh, build console and it's a bit hard to read. So we saw there's a bunch of compilation statements like this. These here are actually some warning messages. So we don't want that. That's not necessary. That's just uh, something being echoed back to us from the compiler. Same as this, just a bunch of warning messages. But these here are actually commands and we want to run those. Uh, the same as this. These are some statements to add these object files to an archive. And this here, we need this. That's the statement to actually flash the Arduino. And this is just the progress output from AVRDude. So any of these orange lines, those are lines we want to delete. And the white lines are lines we want to keep, actually, except for this one here binary sketch size, blah, blah, that's just information being echoed back to us. And I'll turn this into a bash script, so I might as well write. And now I get slightly better syntax highlighting. Okay, so now you'll have to use a bit of judgment in determining which of these lines are compilation statements and which are some of the warning messages. So this here is part of the warning message, so I'll just delete all this. And this here should be deleted. And this here, and the rest of this AVR dude output 
is all stuff we can delete. So I make that a bit smaller so we can see it all. So in the end, there's not really that many commands here. Now, as I mentioned, most of those are just build artifacts. So if I try and delete most of those, I do ls. So it's just the sketch apr24a.cpp. And as you can see, this is exactly the same thing that was in the Arduino IDE, except there's a couple more macro statements here and some declarations. So the first thing we'll try to do is get this bash script running so that it can produce the same thing as the actual compilation process in the Arduino IDE. And I'll just double check this to make sure there's no statements in here that are not supposed to be here. And most of these commands use absolute paths, so it should be okay to run this script as is. Okay, let's try that. And not surprisingly, you can see a lot of the same output that we got from directly in the Arduino IDE. So here's those same warning messages. This is not a problem because this happens in the Arduino IDE itself. I guess they need to fix their warnings in their own code. And if I type ls, you can see all the same build artifacts that we just had. So if I want, I can delete those artifacts. Now they're gone. And now I can rebuild them all from scratch. OK, so the first thing to think about doing is to clean up some of these messy statements, because this is really difficult to read. Fortunately, most of these are fairly repetitive compilation statements. So once we clean this up, it'll look a lot better than it does now. The first thing to notice is that most of the files in the current directory are referenced as an absolute path. So we should be able to delete this part of the path, and we'll get the exact same result. Now, I did this process before, so I conveniently have a few regular expressions kicking around, and I'll just use those to repeat this process. So right now, I'm just taking every instance of this text, and we're going to delete that. So I'll just do that now. OK, that's a little bit better. And let's just make sure that those changes didn't break anything. OK, there's all the build files. So the next thing I'll note is that this path is repeated over and over and over again. So instead of writing that out over and over again, we'll just put that in a variable. So I'm going to call that AVR bin. And since I've done this before, I have a regular expression that'll do that replacement. So we're going to replace every instance of this path with a uh, shell variable. OK, that's working so far. So next, we'll replace that path. And once again, I'll just use this regular expression to replace it with this variable. And by the way, this dash i flag, that's just setting a few different locations where the compiler should look for include files. So if you get compiler errors about includes that are missing, there's probably a missing dash i flag statement. And if I recall correctly, you don't want to put a space after the dash i. OK, let's make sure that didn't break anything. So we'll delete the build artifacts and try and build again. And it looks like we're good. OK, the next thing to clean this up was I took a bunch of compiler flags and put them in a variable. Now, you should note that some of these compilation statements are using C++ and some of them are for C. And the compiler flags for the C++ and the C compiler are different. So this here will be for the C++ flags. And once again, I have a regular expression that'll do this replacement for me quickly. OK, that's starting to look a bit cleaner. All right, and it looks like the build process is still working. And next, I will take the compiler flags for the C compiler and put those in a variable. And just like before, I have a regular expression that'll just replace those to be a variable. OK, this is starting to look a lot more manageable now. OK, it's still compiling. OK, there's still a few more things that are specific to this sketch. So let's make the file name for this abstract. So we'll put that up here in a variable. And once again, I'm just going to do a regex replacement. OK, that's looking pretty generic. And there's actually one last little thing that we missed before, and that is this dash L flag that's referencing the current directory. It doesn't have a trailing slash on it, so that's why the regex missed it. And that's good because we should make that more explicit and just say dot slash, because what it was really referencing was the current directory in an absolute path instead of a relative one. OK, this is a pretty abstract compilation script. Now, this is actually a bash script, not a make file. 
but this is a pretty good starting point for producing the make file. So let's just test this to see if it still works. And that looks good. So we've got a bash script that can compile the code and flash the Arduino completely outside of the Arduino IDE. So the next thing to do is turn this bash script into a make file. And I won't go through the entire process of doing that because this is not a tutorial on make files, but I'll just copy and paste one that I happen to have. Okay, so this is my version of the make file that was produced from this. So I'll take a look at that. You can download a copy of this make file at the link in the description. Now, obviously I skipped a lot of steps, but hopefully you should see the similarity here. These are all the same variables we defined a minute ago, and I added a couple extra ones here. There's a couple of statements here to uh, make a collection of the object files and the D files. Those are used for the make clean rule. Now, this is not the world's greatest make file because I just took a lot of the linker statements and crammed them into a single rule here altogether. But this works for demonstrating the process of going from Arduino to make files. And if you're an expert on make files, you should find it very easy to rearrange this into something a bit better. And each collection of these two lines here in the make file is describing how to make the object file from the C or C++ source codes. And the compilation command and all the flags is here in this statement. So in case you don't understand make files at all, this here is specifying the name of an object that can be built. So this is an object file. And the colon means this depends on. And this here is referencing a file directly in the Arduino libraries. This variable here expands out to be the name and the path of the compiler. And this is the compiler flags. The dollar sign angle bracket, that's a makefile syntax trigger that references the C file here, so you don't have to rewrite it out and copy and paste it every time. And the dollar sign at, that references the name of the thing being made. So these two things are just a quick hand way of not having to repeat everything that's in the initial dependency statement up here. Now, if you're a makefile wizard, you can probably pick out the fact that you can probably collapse all of these into a single wildcard based makefile rule. But I chose not to do that here because there's a few inconsistencies with some of the file paths here. So that makes it a little bit trickier to describe this in a wildcard rule. And writing it out in a more verbose way probably makes it more approachable for beginners. Okay, let's test out this make file. So now I can just do make. And it'll build the whole project and automatically flash it. And as you can see, here are all the build artifacts. And I can do make clean. And that will delete all the stuff that I don't want. Okay, so the code for this sketch has been flashed to the Arduino, and I can see that it's working. But I want to check the serial output directly from the command line. There is a command line tool called Minicom, and I can connect to my Arduino using Minicom-D dev tty usb 0, and then I do dash b for the baud rate. And you have to make sure that you specify this dash b, the baud rate, at the same baud rate that you're outputting from the Arduino at. If you specify the wrong baud rate, you probably won't see any output or you'll see garbled output. The name that you'll use to reference your Arduino will actually depend on how many Arduinos you have connected. And it'll also depend on the type of chip that your individual Arduino uses to interface with your computer. So in my case, I just have a cheap Arduino clone. And in this case, it always appears as TTY USB zero. You can also see TTY ACM zero. And uh, I believe there's a couple other ones. Okay, let's connect to the Arduino with Minicom. All right, excellent. Here's the output that I expect. And Minicom is great because you can use it for an interactive serial session with the Arduino. So if you want to send input, you can do that just by typing on the keyboard here. The user interface for Minicom is a bit confusing. So to exit, I have to go Control A and X, and then I can leave Minicom. I can also do Control A and Z. And as you can see, there's a menu here with a bunch of different options. If you want to use Minicom without having to type sudo all the time, you may have to add the current user to the dialout group. You'll probably have to re-log in before this takes effect. Okay, let's exit that. Okay, now that we can see serial output with Minicom, let's make one change to our program, and we'll verify that this works outside of the Arduino IDE. Okay, let's do make, and we'll connect with Minicom. Okay, there we go. So we successfully made a change to our sketch outside of the Arduino IDE. We flashed it to the board and we connected and verified it. Okay, now let's cover something that you'll encounter inevitably. So let's say we wanna use something like the Arduino stepper motor library. So we'll include stepper.h here. And here I've written a statement that depends on the stepper library. So let's see what happens if we compile this. So not surprisingly, we can see 
that it can't find stepper.h, when obviously the same statement would work in the Arduino IDE. But we can fix this. So first I'll use this find statement to find where stepper.h exists on my disk in the Arduino libraries. Okay, so that looks like the header file that we want. So we need to tell our makefile where it should look for this stepper.h. So we know it's in this directory, so we'll copy that, go to the makefile. Now it happens to be the C++ compiler that needs this because it's compiling our sketch, which is in C++. So we'll do dash I for the C++ flags and then paste the location where our stepper.h is at. And if you want, you could add another I statement to the GCC flags, but we don't need to do that in this case. Okay, so we'll save that and let's try and build. Okay, so that's progress. We don't have that same error message, but it still says LD failed. So it still says an undefined reference to something about stepper. So it's not able to find that. And that's because the header file only specifies the declarations. It doesn't actually have the implementation. We still need to compile the stepper library and link it into our final executable. So somewhere along with the stepper.h is probably a stepper.cpp file. And as we suspected at this location, there's our stepper.cpp. So along with all the C++ sources, we need to add another statement here to create a stepper.o for the object file for the stepper library. And we can just copy the same compilation statement. So stepper.o depends on the file at this location. They should compile it for us. So let's see what happens if we do this. Okay, we've still got a problem here. And that is because this gives us our description of how to compile the stepper library. But after we compile it, we also need to add it to the .a library. So there's actually nothing in the makefile right now that's saying that we even need the stepper library, so it's not bothering to build it. So if I specify here, stepper, now at least I'm saying that we need to build the stepper library. So now let's see what happens. Okay, now we can see that it actually compiled the stepper library this time, but we still have this problem. And that's because I did not add a corresponding statement to add it to the core.a library, which eventually ends up becoming our executable. So we'll add stepper.o. And now let's try that. All right, that looks like it worked. And just to verify, let's do make clean. Okay, and there's all our build files. And just for good measure, let's make sure that we're actually building this correctly and flashing it. So we'll do make. Minicom. Okay, and there's the update we just made. So in this video, we've successfully migrated away from the Arduino IDE, and we can do everything that we did in the Arduino IDE, but purely on the command line. And most importantly, we can still reference and use the Arduino C and C++ libraries. This should make your development a lot faster, and it should make it easier to integrate with other C or C++ libraries in the future. As mentioned before, if you want to download a copy of this makefile, you can do so at the link in the description.